Hi everybody, I'm Mark Wallace, and today we're gonna take a look at this. This is the new Data Color Light Color Meter. Yeah, it's a light meter and a color meter all in one. Now I've been using this for about a month and it is mind blowing how good this is. In this video, we're gonna walk through all the features of this and we're gonna be back here doing some different lighting setups. We're gonna be working with constant light. We're gonna be working with studio strobes. We're gonna be adjusting our color balance. We're gonna be calibrating different lights to make sure that the color temperature of those lights match all with this meter. I'm just in love with the functionality of this. So what does this meter do? First thing you'll notice is it looks different than other light meters. And that's intentional. It's a different kind of light meter for a different kind of workflow built specifically so you can meter exposure and color and solve all of those issues with one device. This meter measures light. You can measure ambient light. You can measure light from a strobe. You can even work with speed lights in high speed sync mode. All of that stuff, again, for stills, or video. You can even connect several of these to an app so you can place these in different places to do calibrations and check different zones of lighting. It's really amazing. You can also measure color temperature in a variety of different ways. We can use simple color to measure color temperature and to see if there's any bias in the green or magenta to set our white balance, again, for video or for stills. We also have color balance. We have a color graph. We can even look at the chromaticity of our lights to see how accurate the color is. This is great if you're working with LED lights specifically. All of these different tools allow us to color correct in a really advanced way to do things like measure the ambient light and then match your hot lights to that, either using gels or adjusting the color temperature with an LED light so everything is the same color temperature. It's just one meter for all of your needs. I absolutely love it. The other thing you'll notice is this meter has no display and that allows you to use an app to control it wirelessly. I can place this where the model is going to be and then with my app go to the light and make adjustments. Now, how do I place this in different locations? Well, we have several options. On the bottom, there's a quarter 20 thread. This allows me to put this on a normal light stand. On the back, there's a magnet. There's some different attachments so I can handhold that. I can stick it on anything that's metal. I can even place this on clothes. And so if I wanna stick this to a model's clothes, I can do that. If I'm doing still photography, still lifes, I have a lot of different options for doing just that. Well, I've been talking a lot about what you can do with this light meter, but I want to show you. I have a fantastic model here today. Her name is Amis. Hola, Amis. And she is going to help me. We're going to first do some ambient light with LED lighting, and then we're going to work with some studio strobes. We're going to show you how to do uh, correct exposure, how to get your light ratios correct, and make some beautiful portraits. Are you ready? Yes. All right, let's go. We're gonna put things into practice with our very first lighting setup. We're using LED lights to do some really amazing clamshell light. And we have three issues with this. The first thing is we have a NAN light, Forza 200, that's a 200 watt light. The color temperature of this cannot be changed. So I think it's around a 5,000 or 5,200 Kelvin light. But back here, I've got some kickers. These are some really interesting Zhuin lights and they can change color temperature. So I need to make sure that my color temperature of my key light matches my kickers. And so let's do that right now. I'm gonna go into my meter here. I have this on simple color. So it's just measuring the color temperature. So I'm gonna first go over here. This is facing the key light. So when I look at that, I can see this is at 5150. So let's just round that up to 5200 Kelvin. That's what our key light has for its color temperature. There's no color shift, it's spot on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate this. And so I'm gonna put the lumosphere down. So it's pointing right at my kicker light. So I can look at that and I can see, oh my gosh, the ambient light. So the light from this kicker is a color temperature of 3920. So that is much more amber. So I need to go and fix that. So all I'm gonna do here is zip over here and I'm gonna make an adjustment. So the nice thing about this is my meter's over there, but I can see what's happening from here. The meter's where it needs to be, I'm where I need to be. So I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna raise this up till we get to 5200 Kelvin. So we're pretty darn close. So we're at 5000. Let's keep going. Almost there. Okay. So that's 5140, we'll call it 5100. Yeah, 
So that's pretty good. Now on my light, that says 5,500. And so if we just use the uh, numbers on the lights themselves, they might not match exactly right. So the other thing I'm gonna do is repeat that. So I'm gonna go over to this light over here and I'll do the exact same thing. So I have to adjust this so it's pointing toward this light. I'm only seeing the light from this uh, light right here. Again, I'm gonna hold this up and I'm gonna change this so I have it right at 5,200 Kelvin. There we go, that is spot on. Now all of my lights have the same color temperature. That is perfect. Now the next thing I need to do is make sure that I know what the correct color temperature is. So looking at this, it's 5200 Kelvin. And so I can set my camera to that. So I've set my white balance. That's all good. All of these are the same color. The next thing we need to do is set our exposure. Now we've already solved two of the issues we talked about earlier. We made sure that our two Zhuan lights match the key light, the same color temperature. And by doing that, we can look and see what our color temperature is that we need to set our camera to, which is 5200 Kelvin. There's no color shift there. Now the other thing we need to do is set our exposure. That's what we're gonna do next. Now, just to mention this, I do have another light right over here. You might've seen it. And so uh, just to save time, I've already set the color temperature of this light to match everything else. We don't have it on right now, but we might wanna use it just to add a little splash of light back here. We'll see how the photo shoot turns out, but this is off right now. So the first thing we need to do is measure the exposure for our key light. Now I know I want to be shooting at f4.5. I know this isn't a very bright light compared to a studio strobe. So I have set my light color meter to ISO 400. That's gonna give me a nice uh, sensitivity to light. And my shutter speed of 200, because I wanna make sure I don't have anything that's just uh, too shaky and blurry in, in the image. So I'm solving for my aperture value. Right now, I can see that my proper exposure is f3.6. I wanna be at about 4.5 for a nice uh, proper depth of field. So I need to increase the exposure of this light. So all I'm gonna do, Again, I'm walking over here to where I need to be and the light meter is staying where it needs to be. And I'm going to increase this until I see that my metered exposure is at f4.5. And there it is, 4.5. And so I've dialed that in and so my key light is ready to go. Now these kicker lights back here, I know that I want them to be around f2, just a little chef's kiss of light. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push this lumosphere down I'm gonna rotate this so it's just seeing the light coming from that kicker and it's showing me, I got lucky, it is at F2. Let's rotate this to the other light over here. I'm looking at that and it's F2.2, but I think we're gonna call that close enough. And so uh, we don't have a model here, we didn't need one. We could just use this on a light stand to dial in everything. And now when our model arrives, we are ready to shoot. And that's what we're gonna do right now. All of our metering is done. We have calibrated our lights. I have set my camera to the readings on my meter. So I'm at ISO 400 at 4.5 at a shutter speed of 200. So now all I have to do is I'm gonna stick this on my light stand there just to get it out of the way. And we're ready to shoot. Amis, are you ready? Okay. We are rocking and rolling. I'm having fun. Are you enjoying this? I think these look great, but we can do even better. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this light right here. It has a Fresnel lens on the front of that. And so that's just gonna add a little bit of a splash of light right back here to give us a little bit of a vignette behind Amis. So that's gonna change the look of our background. It's gonna change the look of our image. And I think it's gonna improve our lighting. So let's do that right now. We are now going to do the exact same lighting setup, clamshell light, but this time with studio strobes, because I wanna show you how you can solve some different metering problems. And so because I'm using all Ellen Chrome lights, I don't have to worry about matching the color temperature. I do need to look and see what my color temperature is so I can set my camera so we get perfect color. So we're still gonna do that. We're still gonna make sure that we meter the light to get a proper exposure from the key and the kickers and everything else. But 
let me show you something. We have a, a really, really unique issue here. And that issue is that on our key light, we have this grid. And that grid is really controlling the light. And so if I don't position my light meter just the right way, well, I'll get an incorrect meter reading. And so luckily we have an assistant back there. And so what we're gonna do, instead of using the light stand, we're gonna use a human light stand. And Amis, what I want you to do is put that on your forehead. She's putting that on the forehead so it's pointing right up at that light. So all of the light coming from the light is gonna hit the meter and none of the light that's being filtered by the grid is gonna miss the meter so that we can get a correct exposure. So on my LM Chrome remote, I am only triggering group one. This key light is only on group one. So I'll hit this and it's gonna fire and I'm seeing that I'm getting a value of 5.6. I wanna be shooting at F8 for this lighting setup. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase the power on my remote, trigger that again, 6.3. I'll trigger it again, seven, very close. One more time and now we're at F8. I'm exactly where I want to be. Now for the background lights, I've already set those so they're uh, hitting at the exact same point of her head. And so what I'd like you to do is put that behind your head. So now she's pointing that behind her. Now I want this to meter just a little kiss of light. So not very much, maybe a stop or maybe two stops less. So I'm gonna meter this. I'm gonna change this to uh, my second group. So it's just the kicker lights firing and I'm getting 5.6. So we're down one stop. That's exactly where I want this to be. Now, all I need to do is set up my camera so that my camera's values match the values that we metered for the key light. That's F8 at ISO 100, a shutter speed of 200. And I know that my light ratios are set correctly. And when I look at my color temperature, I'm gonna go in here. I can see it's at 5,500 Kelvin. I'll set that on my camera everything is going to be exactly right and we're ready to shoot. These photos are fantastic. I absolutely love these. I'm really impressed at how consistent we were able to make our photos between constant lights and studio strobes. And I have to say that we were able to do that using the data color light color meter. We were able to make sure our color was right, our exposure was right. We got all of our light ratios dialed in really, really quickly. And I think things just look really wonderful. Hey, if you wanna know more information about the Data Color Light Color Meter, check out the links in the description of this video. We've got extra content for you. Make sure you check that out. Also, make sure you like and subscribe and turn on the bell if you wanna see more videos. If you wanna see more of Ami's work, of course, in the description of this video, I have a link to her Instagram so you can see all of her goodness. It's really amazing stuff. Thank you so much for helping out today. I had a wonderful time. Thanks for watching and we will see you again next time.